Hi everyone. Today we're not going to do coffee time. We're going to talk a little bit about this book review. The name of the book I will be doing review is called Automated Machine Learning on AWS. This video is actually a review for one of the new product for the publisher Pact. And just for the full disclosure, they sent me a printed copy as well as a PDF before the release of the item. I went ahead and I read over and this review is a reflection of my own opinion because I actually have not received any monetary incentive from Pact. So it's an honest review and hopefully this could provide some constructive feedback for those of you who are interested in this field. So with that being said, let's get started. The first thing I want to say is having been in this field for so many years, I can tell you right off the bat that cloud server and parallel computing are two of the most important building blocks in constructing that machine learning pipeline. So if you have worked in a Eurostox 50 company or if you've worked in an S&P 500 company, chances are you've touched upon some of these technologies as a data scientist. So that is why I want to say I really appreciate the source of this book because the author actually worked on a team in AWS and he's been leading projects. The name of the author is Trenton Potgieter and he's a senior AI ML specialist from AWS. So the first thing I will do is to check the authenticity and the source of where this book and where the material of the book come from. And truthfully, it's one of the most credited sources that I've ever seen. In addition, since I've been in this field for a long time, and I'm speaking this from just my own work experience as well, because as a data scientist, I've personally been dealing with AWS for my profession, and I've seen some of the ups and downs that the system can give you. There are places that you're gonna say, this is awesome, I love it, this makes my life so much easier. And there are also places that you like, hey, this is giving me a huge headache and I just have no idea where to go from here. The good thing about this book is it actually laid out all of those experiences and coming from that environment myself, I can tell you very clearly what those things are when I'm reading through this book. So for those of you who are interested in getting in this field, I believe this book can definitely be the go-to candidate that you want to train yourself and you want to be equipped with if you want to be an AWS specialist. Because not only does this book going through line by line, code by code, how things work and how to deploy that machine, the book also points out the ups and downs. The particular ups and downs that I've been seeing in the industry, this book has covered all. So right off the bat, that's definitely something I would recommend. Now the next thing I want to mention is this difference between the conventional machine learning pipeline as well as data-centric machine learning pipeline. So in a conventional machine learning pipeline, you start with the data, you investigate it, you do some exploratory data analysis, you see what you're doing, right? Once you get a clear idea what's going on, you pick a target, you say, hey, I want to predict that that's going to be my goal. And then from there, maybe you build some machine learning techniques, maybe you build some deep learning models, and then you're trying to train the AI or machine to make that prediction happen. Of course, you have some sort of loss function, so hopefully you're training a machine such that it's making as little error as we possibly can. So once that's done, maybe you do a little bit of tuning and then you get the model deployed. So the data-centric AI actually is originally promoted by Andrew N from Stanford University. And in this book, it actually went into a great deal of detail of how that can be done with the help of the entire AWS platform. So in data-centric AI, you go through what you usually do, that pipeline that I just said before, you go to the same thing. But there's an additional step that you're gonna come back, you're gonna look at the performance, talk to the clients, talk to the business partners, and you're gonna get a consensus of what went wrong. You're gonna come back and you're gonna work out the data again. And then you see, okay, is there any new data I can include? Is there any new features I can include? And then specifically, what are we gonna to do to grab all of them to create a new data? So in other words, fundamentally, data-centric AI is kind of like an upgraded version of the conventional pipeline. The conventional pipeline, you can kind of think as linear, right? You have a beginning, you have an end, then you're done. Data-centric AI kind of follows the cycle. You have your conventional pipeline, but then in the end, you review your data, quality control, quality assessment, you come back, 
you reassure what the data you're looking at is valid. And then you go again. So data-centric AI goes through this loop many, many times. In this book, it actually walks you through what that entire pipeline looks like and how machines can be deployed in practice, not just on your local computer, but on AWS. So that's definitely something very interesting. And I think it actually taught me a lot in regarding to how to turn something experimental or on a trial base to something that's real, that's practical, that you can get it deployed. The next thing I want to say about this book is parallel computing. Of course, right now we're looking at cloud server, parallel computing. You're not just going to have one CPU and you train a huge machine on that one core and you're like, hey, fingers crossed, hope this thing works. In reality, chances are you're going to utilize multiple cores. So if one CPU is not enough, you go to multiple CPUs. If you're working a two-dimensional or high-dimensional tensors, maybe you go to GPU. That is the graphical processing unit. And maybe one GPU is not enough, you parallel it, that will give you a TPU, tensor processing unit. So there are lots of different techniques that you can go with. And the good thing about AWS is that it provides that infrastructure, right? So it's kind of like in the data science team, you got a lead data scientist, and then maybe you got a, a few data scientists working for you, and then maybe you got an engineer on the team to build that infrastructure. So this book teaches you what exactly is that engineering doing for this part of his job, and it gives you that foundational setup, that foundational terminology to make sure that you are aware of what's going on. So take myself as an example. Let's say I'm taking a project that the data set is one gigabytes. Maybe it's a combination of images with a bunch of paragraphs, you name it, right? As complicated of data as you possibly imagine. Well, when that's going to be the case, I need a lot of different directory. I need to save the data somewhere that I can personally recognize. I need to come up with a clean directory where I know data is at one place, code is at one place, and who knows, right? Whatever documents that I generated is at another place. So all these things need to be extremely clear. And when I build that actual model, it needs to speak to each one of these locations. Now, of course, when your data is extremely large, hopefully you're not running that data on your own computer, right? Because I don't want you to have to pay thousands of dollars for a good laptop or thousands of dollars for 20 CPUs, right? That's probably a little impractical. So what you're going to do is you're going to have an account, go to AWS, set up that account, you get your own API, and then you build a machine locally while talking to that cloud server. Or even better, you directly build that image on the cloud and whatever model that you want to train, you just load it up and you work it on that container. So that's something that's interesting and that is something that's going to increase your efficiency by a lot. So in this portion of the review, what I want to say is this book actually give us all of the details in regarding to that part, which I personally found very helpful. And then the last thing I can do for you guys is to show you a little bit of user interface of what AWS look like. I'm sure you're going to find tons of reviews online, but in terms of this video, I'm going to talk about the things that I particularly find helpful. So you need an account and there's a five step process of which one of them you need to fill in your credit card number. Now, of course, they're not going to charge you right off the bat. They're only going to charge you when you've been running this machine for hours or even perhaps days. So I did all of that. I'm not logging to the main console. You click on that, it will give you a drop down of all of these buttons and you can use any one of them. Specifically, I'm interested in the SageMaker as well as the S3 bucket. The S3 bucket is where I can save my data if it's gigabytes of size, right? I don't really want to save that on my local computer. The SageMaker gives you this nice dashboard where you can fire up your own domain. You can fire up your own domain, your own studio, and then you can run Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook in there. So all I got to do is I go to the menu bar, I go to domain, and here you can add a new user by clicking on this button, and you can create your default application in however way that you want. And if you want to fire it up, you just got to click this button and you fire up the studio. So I already went ahead and did it. And when you just got in the SageMaker Studio, it looks like this. So it's a very neat tactical user interface. And the nice thing about this is if you go to the jumpstart, which is bottom left, you get to see all of these preloaded programs, which is really good because I can click on any one of them and I can take a look at what I'm working with. And if this is the kind of the analysis that I need, 
And then I can kind of refer to this as a benchmark notebook. And if I need to use this, I can just hit launch and it will show you the deploy status. Once it's done, it will pop open a new notebook and that's when you can start your own coding. Another feature that I really like about this platform is that it can directly speak with the GitHub package. So for instance, this is the GitHub package for my own company and I code a bunch of functions in there that I need. It's something that's installable, right? All I need is a Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook. I can load this up and I can install it in my Jupyter Notebook. So this Jupyter Lab provided by the SageMaker Studio actually allows you to speak with the GitHub package and I can run the same thing that I can do locally here, which is really nice because now I don't really need a local environment anymore. My computer could be poor quality and that doesn't really bother my workflow. So I can install this package just like what I did before. I install all the dependencies and I can fire up and run a small model myself. So for instance, I can load up the package and then I can load up the data sets and then I can split training and testing and do all that fun stuff. And then in the end, I can call my own module, right? And then there's deep learning function living inside of that module where I can run the deep learning package on here. So notice that in this entire script, it does not actually bother or influence my local workflow. It doesn't take the memory of my local CPU, which is really nice because my own computer, I can turn it on, watch a movie. It doesn't really bother at all. But sometimes when I'm working with huge image data sets, you probably shouldn't watch a YouTube movie simultaneously because that would just chew off the memory. So something like that, you should definitely pay attention to, especially some people I know, they do the stuff I'm doing right now, right? They're working on a local environment. They're teaching their students how Python works, right? Python tutorial, machine learning tutorial. What if you're working on a project that's two gigabytes of image data and simultaneously you're turning your webcam on and then you are recording that whole process on your local computer? that's gonna chew up memory really fast. And sooner than later, you're gonna run out of memory and your computer gonna shut off. Me personally, I've already experienced that a couple of times. And let me tell you, it's not a fun thing. So this fortunately takes care of some of that problems for you. And that's just from personal side. In addition, in practice, I can turn this machine on, write a big for loop. I can train all these parameters that I need to on a virtual machine that it won't affect my local environment at all. So that's what I want to share with you. That's why I find this book helpful. Once again, the title of the book is Automated Machine Learning on AWS. And hope you enjoyed this book review. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next episode.